while undergoing emergency surgery, four-year-old Colton Burpo nearly died. He saw a vision of heaven, and that near-death experience became the subject of the 2014 blockbuster movie, Heaven is for Real. Colton's father, Todd, says that movie has opened the doors for him and his family to share their beliefs with strangers around the world. In his book, God is for Real, Todd answers tough questions about faith and shares how God orchestrates events to get our attention. Well, joining me now is Todd Burpo. It's great to see you again. It's great to be here. We should mention Colton is 18, 18 years old. 18 and in college, and he's pursuing a worship ministry degree. Music's really wow. a love of his heart that God put in it, and uh, we're proud of him. Well, I, I said to Todd a moment ago, if you've seen heaven, I guess you do want to have a worship ministry yes. for your life. Your first book was about heaven being real about the vision that happened yes. in Colton's life. Now you've got one, God is for real, and he longs to answer your most difficult questions. I know that questions about heaven had a lot to do with yeah. why the first book was such a, a screaming success. What made you feel like you needed to do this one, Todd? Well, when you talk about heaven and you identify which God is the God of heaven, so many people have not only different thoughts about God, but more importantly, thoughts about themselves and how do I relate to yeah. God. We have so brought God down that I, one of the things I talk about is we treat him kind of like a, a waiter. You yeah. know, God, if you would just do everything I want and anticipate all my needs and mm -hmm. keep my coffee hot, I might just tip you just a little bit more. Yeah. And that's not God. God is so much bigger than us that we need to, to take a look at how we're approaching God, how we're seeing God, mm -hmm. and at the same time, how we see ourselves. I think a lot of people... I'm ashamed of things in my life. I, I don't know of anyone who isn't. Yeah, me neither. And it's like, God, if I don't even measure up to me, how can I ever measure up to you? Yeah. And to, to, to address those issues without using kind of Walt Disney World pat answers, but here's the hard truth, mm -hmm. and, and let's talk about it in a real way. Like I say, this is the fireman, Todd, just being really honest and really open, but uh, not, not dodging any of those hard questions either. Yeah. And everybody has them. One of the things you talk about in the book so effectively is how God uses our pain, uses yes. our struggles. Discuss that a little bit. Well, you know, after uh, Colton mm -hmm. made it through surgery and then started talking about heaven, a lot of people were mad at me. They were like, well, we lost our son and, and oh, you wow. didn't lose yours. Yeah. You know, so you must get everything you want. And, and you know, wow. and so that anger and that, that loss kind of, came out and I had to remind them, well, we lost a child, plus God saved a child. And I've been stuck in many situations too, yeah. where God didn't do what I thought he should have done. Yes. And that's where many times our faith gets challenged. And so to have an honest conversation about that, I had to do my dad's funeral. And I had a very strained relationship with my dad all my life. Huh. And I stood there above my dad's cast it and had to, had to say to everyone there, here lies my greatest unanswered prayer because God didn't do for my dad what I wanted him to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I talk about what God did do, yeah. but he sure didn't do what I asked him to do. Yeah, which really is, is a <clears throat> um, kind of sticks in the throat of, of a lot of believers because we do treat God like his... His job is to kind of make everything that Absolutely. we want happen for us. How do we get past that? How do we get to the place where we recognize, I mean, the sheer magnitude of who God is and we align ourselves with him and ask, instead of asking him to align himself with us? Well, I think uh, uh, one of the other questions we need to look for is wholeness, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, it says in the Bible, Jesus is the prince of peace. And in our American culture, we think peace is the absence of people shooting each other or stabbing each other or fighting yeah, with each yeah. other, okay? Mm -hmm. But that's not the peace that the Bible talks about. It talks about shalom, wholeness. Yeah. And, and Jesus says that I will bring you peace by making you whole. And a lot of people in our country, well, I don't want to be too religious. Yeah. I just want to have a little bit of that. And, and we need to stop and ask ourselves, how whole do you want to be? Wow. That's... God looks at you and says, you know, <clears throat> all your hurts, all your pasts, if you will just really embrace me, I can, I can put Humpty Dumpty back together mm -hmm. again and nobody else can, but I can do that for you. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit, because you do discuss this in the book as well, and in our day, world today, it certainly is an issue we need to discuss about mixing God and politics. Is that possible? <laughs> well, you know, if, if we don't get that right, we're <laughs> yeah. going to see a lot more con, uh, conflict. We're, we're going to see a... a, a you know, our, our, yeah. our country just turning the wrong direction after another wrong direction. But here, here's the thing that I think that we've got to do. Uh, a, a few weeks ago, my, my youngest son, Colby, said he came home from school and these kids were about to get in a fight. 
And he stood up and said, why, why are you doing this? And what are you going to accomplish? And he talked them out of the fight. Okay. Yeah. Now, if my son hadn't been there, those two boys would have fought. Yes. Yeah. That's where we're at. We've taken God out of our schools. We've taken him out of our government. And what do you have left? Mm -hmm. All this fighting and bickering. To me, the only way back yeah. to peace again and wholeness is we've got to, we've got to invite God back into mm -hmm. our government, back into our country, back yeah. into our courtrooms, yeah. and then that'll stop. In keeping with that comment you made a few minutes ago about we just want enough of Jesus, but not enough to really rock our world. I mean, that's kind of what we've done as believers. You know, re yes. it, it, repentance begins in the house of the Lord, the Absolutely. word says. So much of what you write about in this book isn't for an unsaved world. It's for yeah. a church that's not walking the walk. Absolutely. We got to get back on track. The, the word is so such a guidepost, such a direction, such a map. What happened that we got off track like this? Well, I think sometimes in pastors like myself, we, we need to ask for God's forgiveness because we've gotten away from the message of repentance. Mm -hmm. And I've never read in my Bible where forgiveness is offered without repentance. Yeah. But repentance is such an amazing thing. You want to walk in repentance, yeah. to be healed, to be cleansed, to be free from yeah. all those habits and things in your past that just haunt you, to have all that gone. And I think the church and especially pastors need to rise up and say, you know, Jesus Christ called called us and enables us to be victorious over sin. Let's be mm -hmm. that church. Yeah. Why, why do you <clears throat> think the church had has kind of moved away from that? Because that's been the gospel message for years. I mean, you know, you know a tree by the fruit it bears and yes. seeing that is what makes people go, wow, God is real. You know, how did we get off track with that? Well, I think, you know, uh, we live in such a consumer mentality where people want to pick. Well, um, I like this flavor yeah. and you know, I'd rather sit under a pastor who doesn't push me or make me feel uncomfortable. And I think a lot of pastors have re have realized that, you know, if, if I say really what God wants me to, they, they might not be here to listen to me. Yeah. But here's the thing, look at the outcome. Wow, yes. People need the outcome of a big God in their yeah. lives. They need a big outcome where, where God shows up and, and fixes our communities. Yeah. You know, you can't really talk about Jesus without talk about making him your mm -hmm. Lord. But I've seen, a, I, I've sit in lots of churches where that's happened and my heart breaks and I'm sure it's God yeah. saying, that's my heart. I know that this experience with the ta that your son Colton had, that the family has been through the book, the movie, has to have brought some challenges into your lives. Where's well, your family of... now and what's going on? Well, uh, <clears throat> we just now moved to Colorado. My, my two oldest are now in college, which shows that we're just getting much older. Yeah. <laughs> and yet at the same time, we're so grateful because God is still working. He's still yeah. moving in. And right now we're, we're praying, okay, God, what's that next step for us? And uh, we're just still expecting and waiting on him. And my 13 year old too, he, he just surprises us all the time. So I think, uh, you know, so, so many times people look at Colton as the special child. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, your children, my children, all of them are special in God's eyes. And so it, it's just kind of great to kind of grow up with them. Yeah, well, wonderful to just kind of take your family and snuggle them up it and is. keep everybody when, when together, especially to when you get two that go off home. to college. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's exactly right. If you've got a 13 year old, you got a way to go yet. I got a little bit of time. <laughs> well, if you want to learn more about Todd's book, it's called <laughs> God is for real and he longs to answer your most difficult questions. It's full of great wisdom. It'll guide you in every way you need. It's available wherever books are sold. Todd, thank you for being thank here. You for it's having a me. great book and a wonderful way for people to get answers to some tough questions.